Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the crowding out effect macroeconomics. In this presentation we will understand what crowding out effect is, how crowding out effect fiscal deficit policies of the government and how it impacts the overall economy. What is fiscal deficit? In short, fiscal deficit is the excess of government spending over its revenue. There are two ways in which the government can broadly fund its fiscal deficit. Now in the first way, the government issues debt in the market. This debt is bought by the domestic private investors. Now it's the domestic private investors money that funds the fiscal deficit of the government. In this case, little new money is created in the economy. And because of that, what we call as the phenomenon of crowding out may occur at least on the monetary side. Now what's this phenomenon of crowding out? Now since the money pool is almost the same and the government is taking a, an increased share of money, lesser money remains for the private players in the economy. And hence this can lead to an increased interest rates and lower equity investments. In the second phenomenon or the second way to fund fiscal deficit, since the government has monopoly over money supply, it can print money. How? The government issues debt. This debt is then bought by central banks. Now, the central bank can buy the government debt directly from the government, but usually it buys it indirectly through private players. And how it does that? By printing money, issuing fresh money, which in turn is deposited with the federal government, thus funding its fiscal deficit. In modern context, this is called QE or quantitative easing. So let's formally put what crowding out really is. Crowding out is a phenomenon that occurs when the government increases its spending or in other words fiscal deficit and funds it not by money printing but by selling its debt to private domestic investors. This in turn leads to a lowering of investment and other spending by the private sector. And why is that? Because the increase in government spending without money printing would in turn reduce the amount of credit or the money available to the private sector. This then would increase the interest rates and reduction in demand for other investment products like equities, making credit or money costly to fund the projects for the private sector. What are the consequences of, of the two ways of funding the fiscal deficit for the government and the economy? In both cases, the allocation or reallocation of real resources will happen in the economy. However, as we saw in the first case, since no new money or very little of new money is created in the economy, crowding out will occur on the monetary side, which can affect future investments and hence growth of the economy. In the second way, since new money is being created, no crowding out happens on the monetary side of the economy. Inflation, and this is important, inflation may or may not happen in both ways. We'll see how fiscal deficit affects inflation in the, in the further slides and how inflation can happen due to fiscal deficit. Inflation will happen due to the increased fiscal deficit only if we are close to hitting what we call boundary limits on the factors of production. So in other words, if there is slack in the factors of production, inflation is 
unlikely to occur. Let me explain by an example. Let's say there is a project of making the road and 100 people are employed in that project while only 50 are needed in actual. This is what we call disguised unemployment. Now, in, the, in an adjacent commercial building, there's a work going on and the contractor approaches the contractor, let's say the contractor B of that building approaches contractor A who is on the job of making the road. This contractor needs 10 workers to complete the project going on in the commercial complex. The project is installing statues to improve the aesthetic value of the project of the area. Now to be fair, the economic value of this project is quite small. However, since only 10 people are needed and in any case there is slack in the labor, there is surplus labor working on the project, it's easy for the contractor A to give contractor B 10 laborers. With this decision, the road work is not affected in any way. The road is completed on time and howsoever small the economic value of the project of the project of installing statues to improve the aesthetic value is, the economy gains overall and there is no inflation. Same example but turn around but tweak the scenario a little bit. In this case, all 100 people are needed to make the road and the contractor B again approaches contractor A to get 10 workers. However, this time the contractor A declines to, to give workers to contractor B as all are needed to complete the road. Hence, contractor B offers to pay 1.5 times of wages to laborers to the laborers. That means inflation has increased in the economy since the wages of the laborers have gone up. Now, because of this, since inflation has increased in the economy, the road work also gets affected. Since all 100 people are needed to complete the road, 10 move to complete the project in the commercial building that has low economic value. This is the road project is delayed, the pro overall productivity of the economy is also affected. And hence, in this scenario, there is inflation. This also leads to slowdown in the economy, unlike the previous scenario when there was slack available in the labor supply. Let's say in this case, the government increases its fiscal deficit and out of its benevolence, doubles the health outlay in the economy so that all needy poor people get health cover. What will happen? You know, a technological marvel that can improve the productivity may take one or two years to create, get created. A large expressway can be done, done in three to four years. But to create a doctor, it takes about 30 years. It's a human capital that takes a long time to create. And no matter, no matter the amount of money, no money can help beyond a point in that. And so, if the government does that, where would, be the, where would the good quality doctors come from? And hence, because of this very decision, if increasing fiscal deficit in this way, will immediately ensure that the boundary limits are hit. And that means the healthcare costs will zoom across the country. And this would affect the poor and the middle class in the worst possible way, quite contrary to what the government's intentions were. The final point before we conclude this presentation. Fiscal deficit achieved by the government either through money printing or through, crowding out, through the crowding out effect leads to inflation only if the factors of production are close to their boundary limits. That is, if a lot of slack is present in the economy, then inflation is unlikely. 
It's not that inflation will not happen if the fiscal deficit is achieved through crowding out rates. Now crowding out actually leads to lower demand, lower private investment and inefficient allocation of resources. So given this, I would say it's better to achieve fiscal deficit through money printing than crowding out effect macroeconomics or crowding out effect fiscal deficit policies of the government. And in case someone fears that resources have tightened the economy and there would be inflation, then in that case, in any case, one should not increase the fiscal deficit of the government. Rather, during high inflationary times, the fiscal deficit should be reduced. Only in some rare cases, where the government has to control some skewed demand in some sectors or initiate some kind of wealth transfer for whatever reasons, is when fiscal deficit can be increased and funded through the crowd account effect macroeconomics phenomena. So thank you very much for watching the presentation. Do subscribe if you like such content and comment in case you have any queries. Thank you.